The other day I was going through the comments on one of my videos, and this one, and not like many of them involved with the possibility of a civil war. And somebody left a comment saying, nah, you're wrong. Uh, you know, if that happens, it'll get crushed like that. And, you know, it was a very civil comment. And I, I thought of it about it and I said, yeah, you know, he could be right. I mean, who knows? Who knows how these things play out? But then all of a sudden something popped into the back of my head. I mean, after all, I've been teaching history now for virtually my entire adult life studying and teaching history. I said, where have I heard that before? It'll be over quickly. Of course, one of the places you hear it is in American history at the start of the Civil War. I mean, you don't have to like read a lot of history or be a professional historian. If you watched, you know, Gone with the Wind, if you're still allowed to watch Gone with the Wind, I don't know if it's allowed anymore. You know, if a Southerner is there at that, they're having that uh, barbecue at a... Uh, uh, the, the other guy's house, I can't remember what it's called. And they're all ready to go to war. They're going to win. It's going to be quick. You know, they're going to march on Washington. It's going to be over. The Yankees don't know how to fight. Southern boys, they ride their horses. They're all armed. They're, they're warriors. They're, you know, their they're, uh, heritage, the whole thing. They're going to make quick work of those Yankees. They're all foreigners and immigrants and mechanics. I mean, what do they know about fighting a war? And if you're in the North, it's sort of the same thing. On to Richmond. Remember first battle of Bull Run, first Manassas? If you've seen pictures or you've read about it, I mean, the crowds from Washington went down in their carriages to watch the battle because they thought this is going to be it. They're going to go down there. I mean, the whole army had basically stuck by the side of the Union. At least the, the formations did. The individuals, many of them, had gone south. And we had our great army, and we're going to march down there, and these rebels are going to show up. They're in their rags, and we're going to kick the butt out of them and march on to Richmond, and that's going to be the end of the war. It's all going to be over quickly. That's what both sides thought. I mean, you can't find people thinking, or very many people, other than uh, uh, the, the, the one actor in, uh, what's his name? I can't even think of his name, uh, in, go in Going with the Wind, who thinks this is going to be a tough war. This is going to be a long war which is what it became. If you look at the, the First World War, remember the Germans? They are going to Schlieffen plan. Kaiser said they're going to be home before the leaves fall from the trees. You're going to be home by Christmas. You went to war in August 1914. You're going to be home by December. How'd that work out? How quick was the First World War? How many people thought the World War, that the First World War, the European global war, that, or European starts in Europe, spreads around the globe, was going to go on for, you know, more than four years. Not many people. There were a few. But for the most part, everybody thought it was going to be over quickly. I mean, Prussia had defeated Austria in six weeks. They defeated France in six weeks. Most of these wars had been quick. Denmark, quick war. You know, wars are fast. Now, there have been some longer wars. It's been the American Civil War, but uh, they didn't count. As uh, one of the Prussian generals said, the Americans were just, uh, you know, a bunch of amateurs roaming around in the woods, shooting at each other, or something like that. Nobody thought, you know, when the Kaiser sent his troops marching into Belgium in August 1914, he didn't think he was going to end up losing his throne, let alone think that Germany was going to be defeated. When the Kaiser, I mean, when, when the bizarre Russia sent his troops off to fight in the war, he didn't think it was going to be the end of the Romanov dynasty, and he and his family were going to end up dead in some dilapidated house in Ekaterinburg, executed, dumped in a well. Their bodies dumped in a well. Nobody foresaw that. Franz Joseph of, of Austria-Hungary Austria didn't think this was going to be the end of the Habsburg Empire. Centuries, the Habsburg Empire are going to be brought to an end by a decision I'm making today to go to war over Serbia. Nobody foresaw that. When the Ottoman Empire joins the war, they didn't think, you know, this is going to be the end of the Ottoman Empire, this is going to be the end of the Sultanate, and this is going to be the end of the Caliphate for the first time since the death of Mohammed. That's not what was on their mind either. They didn't see that coming. This is going to be a quick war. This is going to be an easy one. How often do, have we heard this? World War II. 
Hitler invades Poland, 1st of September, 1939. Hitler doesn't think this is going to be a global war. He doesn't think he's going to lose. He doesn't think he's going to end up, you know, blowing his brains out in a bunker and having his body burnt. Pieces of his skull are going to be taken by the Russians back to Moscow. That's not his vision of where he's going. This is going to be a quick war. We're going to knock out Poland, then we'll knock out France, and then we'll knock out the Soviet Union in, in you know, uh, 12 weeks. It's all going to be over. How often have we heard people think if there's some sort of conflict, it's going to be quick? Or when the British thumbed his nose at the American uh, revolutionaries, the Patriots, and decided to send his armies across the sea to try to suppress the rebellion in 1776 and 1777 and later. Did he think this was good? I mean, it was going to be quick. He's going to send John Burgoyne with his big army. General Johnny is going to go up there in Canada. He's going to march down, come down the rivers, come down, take Albany, move down to New York, be reinforced there, and he's just going to keep marching south. You know, how can these rebels, patriots, whatever they call themselves, they're with their, their homespun and their muskets, how can they defeat an army that contains some of the best trained and disciplined infantry in the world? You know, the thin red line. And I don't have time to go into all the things that made the British infantry so dangerous. I mean, these guys had such high rates of fire and training and discipline. They fought in two lines, whereas most European armies fought in three. But the British could put out the fire, equivalent firepower in two lines. That it, you know, it, it was just amazing. But we were going to take them on and defeat them. But the British never conceived that that was a possibility. When Burgoyne marched south, he didn't think he was going to end up surrendering his army near Saratoga and going home in disgrace. He thought he was going to be a hero. He was going to be a victory. This was going to be easy. This was going to be quick. Now, it's my point here that if some sort of civil war breaks out, a full-scale civil war breaks out in this country, it's going to last a long time. No, not necessarily. It could be quick. It's entirely conceivable it could be over very quickly, one way or the other. What this is basically is a cautionary tale. If you look at history, one of the things you can probably assume, one of the lessons of history is that once wars start, we really have a very bad track record of predicting how they're going to end or how quickly they're going to end. We really do, don't do very well with that. It's a lot easier to start a war than it is to contain it once it's begun, to limit its ferocity once it's begun, and to bring it to an end when it should be brought to an end. The Germans should have surrendered long before May 1945. I mean, you, you could argue, looking at it back historically, that by the fall of 1943, the Germans didn't have a chance in hell of winning that war. And yet they continued to fight for another year and a half. Millions more people died, really for nothing. It wasn't going to change the outcome of the war. But that's part of the nature of war. You know, the Confederates probably should have just surrendered when Atlanta fell, certainly when Savannah fell. But they kept fighting. The war went on for, you know, another half a year or so. That's the problem with wars. Once they start, they're a force of their own. You can't control them. You can't really contain them very well. And you certainly can't dictate when they're going to end. Anyway, that's my take. Disagree, agree, leave it, leave something in a comment. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends, hit the notification button so I, you'll know when I post new videos. And until the next time, keep fighting.